So uh, glad to be with you all. I wish it was in person. Uh, looking forward to doing that sometime again real soon. Um, so my name is Alan Glickenhaus. I'm with IBM. I'm the digital transformation and API business strategist. And I've been working in the governance area for quite a long time now, um, but cover a lot of different things. So basically what I do in my role is um, work with businesses all around the world, all different industries, uh, all different sizes, and understand what you're trying to accomplish and, and share with you some insights that I've gained from other companies and best practices. And I do that either through one-on-one -on -one workshops or API days kind of events. And when I'm not doing that, I write about it. So I've written a large number of articles, papers, blogs, created videos, and the numbers you see next to these categories are the number of things that uh, I've published in each one of the areas. And for this particular topic today, uh, we're just focusing in on uh, one, actually, one uh, new white paper that I published in the area of strategy, governance, and best practices. And I'll, I'll share with you at the end of this content links to all of this. And I'm assuming that I'll be sending the API days folks these uh, slides and you can download them from them and get these links um, to, to all the things that I've written. All right, so with that, let's get into today's topic. Um, so I, I'm jumping into, into governance without a lot of um, you know, preliminary um, discussion, which is normally not the first thing you, you do. Um, so let's just start with an assumption that you know, you're trying to do something like speed your, your um, uh, delivery of, of functions or offerings to market. Uh, you want to do that through an API approach. Um, and so you're trying to scale up your API adoption or create an API uh, initiative. And so you want to get these APIs used. You want to get them in, into the consumer's hands. You want to get that done fast. And without any governance, you're going to have problems, uh, which John just covered a lot of in, in the previous session on overlapping API function and poor and inconsistent API design. So the reaction to that might be, well, we need consistency. We need reuse. We need centralized control. You know, we need to make sure that we lock this down and do it right. And with too much governance, we get bottlenecks and failure to deliver on the speed to market, which is what we're trying to accomplish in the first place. So neither one of these is, is the right answer. We need to be somewhere in the middle and, and, and really you know, uh, struggling in the same way John was in the last session with you know, trying to come up with one answer that fits everybody is just not going to work. So, so all the advice and best practices that I'm gonna share with you today, you know, take what I say, use it where it makes sense, adjust it appropriately for your particular environment in your company. So I, I do like this phrase, and I've been using this phrase in the area of governance before even I started working in the API area. And it says governance should make things easy to do the right way and hard to do the wrong way. And, and if you take away one sentence, if you remember one thing out of this whole presentation, that's the sentence to remember. Because um, unfortunately, too many people, when they're focusing on governance, just slow everything down. Uh, and that's bureaucracy. That's not governance. So. Um, automation, which John, uh, I just heard him speaking about, is one of the ways that we can guide people to do things the right way and make it more difficult for them to go out of bounds and, and, and do things the wrong way. And with that kind of uh, automated governance, um, as much as you can do it, you start to streamline things so that you don't have the exceptions. And only when people try to do exceptions, they're trying to do things that don't conform do we want to slow it down and say, is there really a reason why you're doing that? And so um, take this to heart and, and use this appropriately. Um, as far as governance, uh, again, we don't want to um, overwhelm and, and really plan to death all the governance that we might need three years from now or even a year from now. Um, and so as we start to get started uh, in an API initiative, most often, the first APIs that you're dealing with, you're learning a lot, you're targeting typically an internal audience for people inside your company to use these APIs. And then later you'll progress out to known partners, maybe onboarding partners, public APIs and so on. And so your governance concerns should grow with your initiative. And so starting off with a lighter um, touch governance and then adding as you need to add along the way. Um, there are some things that are always important to understand. Uh, communication is, is one of the key things I always focus on with businesses to make sure that you are communicating 
to various audiences the things they need to know, whether that's the consumers that the APIs actually exist, or whether it's to um, the people who are funding the initiative for the measurements of how we're doing so far and knowing it yourself so that you can adjust appropriately. So as we, uh, I started to think about organizational structure and changing organizational structure to form uh, a center of excellence um, around governance for APIs, there are different businesses that are going to approach this differently. And it depends on you know, where you are in, in, your, in your API journey. And so if you're at the very beginning, you don't really have business use cases defined, you don't have a strategy for APIs, you're just playing with the technology to, to understand, is there something here that I can use? You're probably not ready to jump in and make wholesale organizational changes, right? That's just not enough of a commitment in the business to do that. On the other hand, on the other extreme, if you've got a strategy, you've got the business goals established, you've got a lot of use cases and you're ready to go, your organization may, may be more ready to accept changes and, and new roles and responsibilities. Um, a couple of years ago and at many API days conferences, I presented on a maturity model that we use uh, in IBM that talks to how we see the API economy moving over time from a, a, a IT centric uh, kicking the tires kind of internal only uh, IT only scenario into a partnership with the business into a business led uh, um, scenario and then into an ecosystem and marketplace kind of a an environment. So again, as you mature over time, your governance and organizational structure is probably going to change as well. And then finally, uh, inside your business, how are you organized? Do you have uh, different lines of business and, and each line of business works independently? Is there a central IT organization? Is there something in between there? Um, and how well do you and uh, the business and IT work together? These are all things that go into how you might figure out which way you wanna go from an organization uh, perspective. Um, we do recommend that you start. Uh, so, so whether you call it a center of excellence or whether you call it an API community or an API guild or something like that, having some kind of a, 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 a central or, or community of practice that uh, starts off with some small amount of um, understanding of what you're trying to accomplish and, and some standards and best practices that you put in place uh, and then growing that as necessary over time. And we're going to talk about what these standards and, and all are as I get through here. Um, all right, so the next I don't know, seven or eight charts are, are all about this particular diagram that's at the bottom of the screen here. Um, and, and so what I'm going to do is just fill this out with roles and responsibilities for the different participants in an API core team and the related stakeholders. And, and so as, as we read through this and as I, I explain each one of the roles, um, I want to point out, first of all, don't make the assumption that each role is one person or each uh, person is one role. Uh, you can have um, many people doing one role and you may have one person that does many roles and that may change over time again based as uh, things grow up. So, so that's important to understand. So let, let's start by filling in the core team roles. So the first role, which is obvious, uh, is that we need an API developer. And, and this developer is in IT and they own the technical implementation of the API. So they understand um, you know, the standards for APIs, they understand uh, and will help establish your standards for APIs, they understand security and setting rate limits and, and how uh, the APIs will work with the different things that they need to access, uh, whether those are web services or databases or applications or even other APIs based on, you know, from your company or from other companies. Um, you also may need to uh, uh, create web microservices. And so microservice coders may be a part of this role as well. Maybe not, uh, maybe, and again, here's where you may have multiple different people that do that based on, on the skills. And so they're involved, uh, the developer is with uh, technical governance issues like API standards, naming conventions, things like that. So. Uh, oftentimes this role, if you have such a thing as an integration developer in the past that have done other kinds of integration, that would be the kind of role that would expand into doing this as well. The next uh, role in the core team is an operations role and, and they're going to be responsible for all the DevOps type things, the platform build, the operations of the platform, uh, the maintenance of the platform, 
making sure everything's performing okay. And they may also be involved in administrative tasks like setting up the organizational structures for your consumers and your providers and doing approvals for people that are coming in and asking to access APIs. So this role is, is gonna be sure that they're involved with um, how things are running. And again, we often see this staffed from uh, operations part of, of organizations. The next role is, is one that um, I, I often have long, long discussions with and have written blogs specifically on this role, um, is the API product manager. And, and this is a business role. So in this case, what this person is doing is identifying the business needs that we want to address with our APIs. And so that starts with what are the audiences that we want to target for our APIs and what do these audience need from us? And, and so um, this is a, a, a person who's going to understand the marketplace for your API, understand uh, what things we want to bring to that market, and then set up uh, along with the API developer, the actual API product that we want to build and offer to that market. Once the, de the developer does their work and, and everything is ready to go, this role also has the role of communication that I spoke about earlier, of, of communicating and demonstrating to the audience that this is the new way to uh, do things, that APIs are better for you than what you've done before. And, and so here's why you would want to use that. Um, and, and so they care about the success of the APIs. They're trying to drive this into the marketplace. Uh, and they're gathering metrics on how well that's being done, typically using the analytics part of a, an API management platform. Um, for most businesses, this is a new role. It doesn't really map easily to one of the existing roles in, in uh, the company. And so we require typically funding and staffing for this role that didn't already exist. You, you might take people who were other product managers or business analysts, that's the most common thing. But the difference is that, that really this is a, a new set of skills um, that uh, is not typically in most businesses today. Uh, and the challenge here, because this is new, is businesses won't staff it. So if you are early on in your initiative and you are not committed to making uh, com uh, investments, it's tough to justify how do I pay for this new role to come into place. Um, and, and so we start to see people doing things like saying, well, the API developer can do this role because they can build APIs. And the challenge is the API developer role understands the technology. They can build a, a, a wonderful API, we hope, uh, but they're not into market research and they're not into um, um, you know, what the consumer's world is, right? So they understand the assets that they're accessing with the API, but not as much the, the, the scenarios that the business uh, consumers are trying to, to do. And so we see a lot of failures here because we don't staff the product manager role and assuming the API developer can do it. And then the APIs that they build are not the right APIs. They're not at the right granularity. They're not, uh, they're, the, the consumer has to put together too many parts for this to be uh, useful. And, and so, um, so all of these are issues that you need to um, overcome. And then the last concern, of course, is also that, well, we're only doing internal stuff. So again, we don't need to worry about that because uh, it's only internal and, and that's not true either. So a, a big discussion, you probably do a whole session just on this one role, um, but it's something that's important to the success. And without it, you may find that you think your initiative is a failure, but really the problem is that you just didn't have the right APIs being built. The, the final role on the core team is the API initiative leader. And you may not have one of these in the beginning. So at the beginning, you may just have an API product manager and the developer and the operations person, and, and that's fine. Um, but as the initiative grows, and as you start to try to expand this across many different projects, across many different lines of business, this is the person who's really trying to drive that out across the company. It may be a role that the product manager grows into, or it may be a separate role, uh, uh, you know, somebody else that comes in to do this. Uh, but as APIs and as the initiative becomes more important to your business, having an initiative leader is, is a, a good idea as well. So that's the core team. Now around that, we have some uh, related stakeholders. And so on the IT side, um, APIs need to invoke something. And, and so the things that they invoke maybe service owners or asset owners uh, that are inside the, the enterprise already. And so who are these people that we are using their assets that we need to integrate 
uh, too. And then APIs are often part of a larger integration architecture that deals with events and, and messages and application integration and even files. And so how do we position which one of these things is done when? And then of course, another big part of APIs is also security. And so establishing and working with your existing security is critical uh, as well. On the business side, uh, we have uh, a couple of also uh, related stakeholders. So there's the application developer who may be a business developer who's coming out with your new mobile app or social media thing that you want to do or whatever it, it may be. And if they're inside your company, they are a related stakeholder. They are your customer for your API. Um, we also may have the business domain owner, um, which is the manager or the management team of the API product manager. They're the ones who own the APIs that you're going to go out with. And then finally, there's the executive steering committee that is the organization or executives that have funded the API initiative. And they are you know, providing the resources, the funding to, to make this happen. And of course, you want to um, report back to them how things are, are going and hopefully with good news. So, so this is the big picture, right? Now, obviously, I, I said at the beginning, one size does not fit all. Some of you will make adjustments, and probably most of you will make adjustments to this picture. But what this is kind of the roles and responsibilities that we've seen working in, in many different businesses around the world. Um, you know, a smaller company may have one person that does multiple of these roles. Larger companies may have many people that do a single one of these roles. So uh, hopefully, um, you know, that's a quick drive-by of, of these roles and responsibilities. Let's, let's hit on a couple of other items. Um, Many businesses, most businesses that I talk to have multiple lines of business. Each one works independently. And, and so understanding uh, and rolling this out across lines of business, you get into discussions around API ownership and how we're going to handle this from a, a not only a consumer organization perspective of who are the target audiences, uh, but also the provider organizations. And each provider organization may have their own standards and, and think ways that they want to do things. And so setting up provider organizations and mapping that to potentially common consumer organizations is something that you want to think about as you're structuring the implementation. So a, a quick hit list of, of center of excellence processes and concerns. I, I, and I, I you know the timing on these sessions is always very short, but uh, so just a couple of quick hitters on, on five key items. Uh, every use case that you come up with, every API you come up with, you should know who's going to consume that, right? So you should have a target consumer in mind that you've built this API for. And then you may think about this internal audience and say, is that really where this is going to exist only? Or is it also going to be external? Or maybe some things are only external. And, and so have an understanding of what where, where the API is going to play. Um, Naming conventions, of course, are important. Uh, documentation guidelines, any kind of monetization, which is another, again, whole big topic we could talk about, um, is something to think about. Uh, security, uh, understanding the different needs for security. Uh, some APIs may be totally open in the sense of uh, it's on your website today. People can look it up. Why not just make that data available through an API? I don't need to know who they are when they're accessing it to other things that are much more important to understand that it's my bank account information and only I should be able to see that and not somebody else. And we'll get into that a bit more in a few minutes. Life cycle, again, minimize the, these things. With the whole point of APIs is, is to um, ha have a, a quicker time to market. And, and so understand that you, know, that you wanna move things through the life cycles fast, um, but also think about how you're going to version things and, and, and how that's gonna play out as well. And then finally, uh, make it easy for people to find your APIs. So organization and classification is something to think about as well. And we'll talk more about the terminology in, in another minute. So, so these are just a couple of quick hit uh, areas to, to think about. Uh, on the technical side, again, this is just drilling down into some of the things that were on the previous chart, um, understanding your options for security, for scalability, for the different parts of the solution that need to scale. Is it the number of API calls that are scaling, or is it the number of consumers that are accessing the developer portal, or is it the number of API builders, developers that do, you need to scale up? Each one of these might be different, and you might want to scale different parts of the solution appropriately. And then also understand that when you deploy something today, it may be on-premise, and tomorrow it may be on 
cloud A and the next day on cloud B. And, and so having a plan for how are things going to move around and having flexibility built into that is something to think about as well. So uh, I spent a lot of my time, a little less so lately, um, so maybe this is finally getting, uh, getting settled, but terminology is important and, and people will often say words and mean other things. And, and so um, you may spend a lot of time saying the word API or microservice or service, and you may think that you're communicating appropriately with everybody else and they may have a different picture in mind. Um, many times people say microservice and they mean the API or vice versa. And, and so um, I've written a bunch of blogs on that. All of these are, are linked here and, and understanding the positioning of what's an API, what's a microservice, what's a service, and having that discussion within your team so that you all have a common understanding and that you use the terminology appropriately will help you from lots of problems down the road. So I can say spend a little bit of time and get the terminology in place. Um, as early as possible. Uh, if you build it, they will come, uh, does not work. A and so uh, I'm about to publish a blog on this topic about changing the culture of an environment to become uh, more API oriented. And how do you move uh, people who are doing things one way into doing things a new way? And, and changing human behavior is tough. It's especially tough if you don't put, put somebody's job in place to do that. And that's where this product manager role comes in again. So very important to, uh, to put the product manager uh, role in place. Measuring success. Uh, we often get asked about what metrics should I have? There's a few of them here on this page. Uh, my, my message to you on metrics is if you've established goals for the success of the initiative, those goals are the things you want to measure. Uh, don't fall into the trap of measuring what's easy to measure. Um, Counting the number of APIs or the number of API calls or things like that can get you into bad metrics. You, you generate lots of APIs and you didn't need that many APIs or um, having lots of calls because things are um, uh, not done efficiently is, is not a good thing either, right? So, so understand what success means and measure success, not measure what's easy. So, so that's my messaging here. Uh, privacy is something to think about. So obviously we think about security in an API and what things need to be private to only the application user of the, uh, the app that's using my APIs, but also think about other kinds of privacy, uh, organizational privacy. You, you may have APIs that are being used by multiple business partners and those business partners may be competing with one another. So be sure that um, they can't see each other's data, right? That, that they feel secure that what they're doing with you is not exposing their data to other companies that they're competing with. So that's something to think about. And then also legal. Um, so I know it's a, a, the dreaded term legal, um, but uh, consider the ownership of the assets you're providing, the ownership rights that you're giving to the person who is consuming the API and what they're allowed to do with the data that you give back to them. Uh, all of these things are things that legal may be, have concerns about. And so ignoring it is not a good idea, um, but getting ahead of it is. And, and so uh, working with the legal department to help explain to them um, that this is a new interface. It's a new way of doing business with your, your company, just like the web was a new way of doing business, just like mobile was a new way of doing business. We now have APIs as a new way of doing business. And, and you know, make sure that they understand that no is not, is not an acceptable answer, that you know, we are going to do this, let's figure out how to do it and how to make it uh, work. So, so that's that. Um, as time goes by, you may choose to add more governance. Uh, again, keep it minimal, um, but you know, these are the kinds of things that you may start to think about and just progress over time. But don't, don't, don't try to do all this before you get started which is really what I'm saying here. So most businesses start small, lighter governance. You add maybe additional projects, additional internal users, um, bring on known partners, then maybe new partners, and then maybe some public APIs and your governance will build over time as well. So keep it simple, um, focus on a community of practice model, uh, get good feedback from the groups that you're working with, um, try to automate as much as possible. Try to manage by exception. Don't, uh, don't micromanage. Uh, try to guide people in the right direction. And, and as you, they do it right, 
let them keep progressing. Don't uh, have bureaucratic meetings every week where everybody has to come in front of you and present something that was perfectly fine. Um, so so um, focus on, on, on growing your initiative quickly. And, and so, so that's it, get started um, is key and, uh, and work with this. I wanted to point out um, at the end, I mentioned I wrote a lot of things. And so again, we'll get you this content. Um, all of what I'm presenting today, so this is page one of three of different links that, of things that I've written about uh, over the last several years. The links on the top left will get you to all the newest things that I publish. So if, when I pu publish the new one on culture in a week or two, um, that'll pop out in, into one of these links. I just recently wrote a series of blogs on COVID-19 and cloud integration. So you may wanna look at those. Uh, but specifically for this topic that we talked about today, this one right here, Recommendations for an API Economy Center of Excellence is a white paper. And that has uh, uh, a lot more detail on everything that I just spoke about and doesn't have a short time limit to communicate it to you. So, uh, so I recommend you download that paper, it's free. Just go ahead and get it and, and you can read more um, beyond what I've just said today. And then the last sl set of slides here are on um, various other topics about architecture, technology and industry. Uh, related things. So Excellent. with that, let me stop. Thank you, Alan. I really appreciate it. We are out of time, unfortunately. So if you have questions for Alan, please reach out to him on Twitter 